you want to keep if you want to keep making it difficult and not co be willing to work on a solution, the solution then that's would be for them to keep possession of their animal. That they don't have to. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Mikey Mo here. I've got another patrol vlog for you. This one's going to boil down to one call because it's a long call. It's almost a half hour long, but a lot of you guys say you like the longer videos and I wanted to use this video as an example for a couple reasons. One, like I always say, this is what we deal with more than anything than any other call. It's just nonsense stuff like this where adults cannot get along and come to a reasonable solution. Two, just as another example for the people who are interested in law enforcement of why I always say time and time again, work in customer service, work in something with public relations prior to law enforcement is you need to know how to talk to people. You need to know how to talk to everybody, all different walks of life and everything out there and try to reason with them and come to solutions even on simple things like this. In fact, these kinds of calls in a way are harder than most of your criminal investigations because there is no specific playbook or rule book for these. It's like, hey, let's come to a realistic adult conclusion, use some common sense. Criminal investigations are pretty black and white. Hey, here's a statute, does it meet the requirements? Did this person commit a crime? The end. And they're pretty easy. Systematically, you can go through each one of them. So it's calls like these that actually take the people skills and the gift of gab, if you will. Now, if you're new here, I've been a police officer for 15 and a half years. I primarily cover law enforcement topics on this channel and then I have a series like this one where I actually show you calls for service that we go to via the body cam that we wear on duty. So if you're new here, definitely hit that subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications so you can find out when I post new videos like this. As always, if you guys can do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button down below. It helps promote this video, get it out to some other people and it doesn't cost you a penny to do it. As always, all of the links for all of my social media platforms are in the description box down below. Click on those and follow along on Instagram and the other platforms so you can see updates in between the full length YouTube videos such as this. Uh, without any further ado, here's the video. The police. Hello. Somewhere away, I lost my mask. All right. All right, can I do for you? Um, well, we're calling because it's been a constant issue with their dog not being on a leash. Okay. Our landlord has advised him multiple times that the dog needs to be on a leash in the common area. Okay. The front area is theirs. So they can do whatever the hell they please with it. Okay. Once again, the dog's off the leash. This is like the hundred millionth time. And right. this is the first time I'm calling the cops because I'm done with it. The landlord said the next time, call the cops. Okay. The dog came, charged at us again. <clears throat> Granted, they both had their dogs out. Right. He immediately got up, jumped up, grabbed his dog, took care of the situation. They let their dog continue to do what it was doing. Okay. Knocked all the groceries out of our hands. Knocked my son over. Knock. Okay. And this is a constant thing, knocking our kids over. I'm completely just over the situation. Okay. I don't know what to do anymore. We, we, we have tried to go this route, that yeah, route. In the studio, you're jumping. We proceeded to bring the groceries inside. Um, I went outside because I thought there was still something in the car that she was taking out. She actually proceeded to go over there to try and ask them to please keep the dog on a leash. All right. And then that's when the escalation That's when everything occurred. just hit the fan uh, uh, again. She said, the okay. dog doesn't need to be on the leash because I'm outside with it. She said, well, if you're not controlling a dog, it makes no difference if you're outside with it because it's running all around. It just right. knocked my kid over. Right. It just spilled out groceries. Okay. And she was like, oh, it's fine. It's fine. You'll live. You deal with it. Okay. All right, so so here's the deal. I don't have the greatest news for you guys, all right? Um, and the, the gentleman that also works, um, that lives there, tried to actually come up on my porch. Well, they both came on the, the porch. porch. Okay. The we stayed Gregory, over here the whole time. The guy Gregory stood in front of him with his wolf, because okay. he has like a wolf dog. Okay. To try and keep them from coming on our property. Okay, no, I understand. Um, so here's where you guys are in a little bit of a predicament, all right? Uh, an apartment complex like this, a gated thing like this, they are not required by any law or ordinance to keep their dog on a leash, okay? Oh. It doesn't matter whether they have control of it or not. This whole area is considered private property, 
okay? Mm -hmm. So this is going to boil down to something that is going to fall on the landlord, all right? Question. So, hold um, on. Hold on, wait till the end. Oh, sorry. Wait till yeah. the end. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so what it's going to boil down to is whether or not he's willing to essentially evict them or fine them uh, if the behavior continues, okay? Because what he's going to be faced with is one of two things, right? Is if he doesn't do anything about it and you guys, you know, are like, you know, we're done with this, we're leaving, all right, then he's going to lose you guys as tenants or renters. Now, something like this, where there's an actual issue, something like this, basically, if there's something that is an issue, okay, that the landlord's not addressing or doing something to enforce, you can break your lease and there's no repercussions to you. He can't charge you for it. He can't hold it against you or anything like that, right? So you would have the option of, basically, if he's not willing to fix it and you're like, well, screw this, I'm not going to live here. You guys could walk away free and clear and, you know, do that. If he's willing to do something about it and say, hey, if this happens again, if I get a report of it, I'm going to charge you guys $50 every time something happens or whatever, or evict them. They're for claiming it's a service animal. That's the problem that he's having. And he's with a lawyer, but he's having an issue because they're claiming it's a service animal. It doesn't matter whether it's a service animal or not. And one of the things that's <clears throat> clearly stated in the rules and regulations for service animals is they have to be under voice command and control they're at all times. Voice command correct, all. correct. <laughs> and I'm going to and I'm gonna talk to him about it and let him know where things stand. So it, it boils down to, you know, here's the thing. It, again, even if it was a, a service animal and it sort of listened to the commands or whatever, um, 312CD, whatever other units come and you can cancel them. Um, if, it, if it violates rules and regulations that he has here, then he can still evict them. Okay, They're, they're not just protected because it's a service animal. He has to maybe rent to them if they have an animal that's a service animal when he would normally say no pets, mm -hmm. but he could stop rules that says, well, you know, I'm allowing it as a service animal. However, it's disrupting other people. It's doing this and that. So that could still be a violation of his lease terms. All right. It's not just a, a free for all because they claim it's a service animal. Okay. So he could still evict based on that violation of lease agreements or things like that, okay? Mm -hmm. So he does have options. The lease is up next month, and that's, and that's what a, he's trying to... It's simply all he has to do. Everything, but it's just getting to the point right. where I'm, I'm, I'm over my kids getting knocked over. My I don't son is too. He's autistic on top of okay. it. And it's just like, I'm, I'm, I'm at my breaking point, so it's going to end up being a physical altercation because it almost was tonight oh, right, yeah. when right. they both came right. to the porch. And, and listen, and, and here's the deal, and I'm going I'm to tell them this too, something for them to consider. I don't know if you guys are gun owners or not, but you know, here's the thing. comes to an animal like that, animal comes running up on your porch, knocks your kids over, all you have to do is articulate that you were in fear and you thought I was attacking your kid, yeah, you shoot yeah, that I dog. Just, I was about to ask you because yeah. I have a problem with big dogs. Right. Like my leg is shaking. Right. We have a little three-pound chihuahua. I right. don't like big dogs. Okay. Their dog it. ran in our house I've, and took I've, off after okay. the chihuahua. I've, I've, I've obviously, that. that's an issue. You know what I mean? So here's here's what I'm saying. I obviously am not encouraging this by any means dogs. or anything like that, but I'm just letting you know, and I'm going to let them know the exact same thing I'm telling you guys. If the dog came running in here and all of a sudden, you know, you stabbed it with a kitchen knife because you can articulate that you thought it was attacking your dog or about to attack your family and you were scared for everybody's safety, you're not going to get in trouble for it. You know what I mean? And I love dogs, all right? I am not by any means encouraging hurting an animal or anything like that, but I want them to understand the severity of this. And if they're not controlling their animal, and if you're telling them it's literally running into your house yeah, at times, house. then that is a huge, huge issue. Okay. We, we, we have multiple text messages, call records between us and the landlord proving it. I've taken pictures. They let the dog, she just recently cleaned up, I think it was yesterday, but let the, the dog piss and everywhere. shit right. everywhere. And this is a huge sudden. issue that and your and landlord, unfortunately, needs to take responsibility for because just being completely 100% honest with you, there's nothing we as the police can do for you. Not on private property like this, all right? Like it doesn't. It's, it's it's not just that. I mean, there's a number of issues that compound on it. I get it. But but that issue is, is the one that, that kind of you know. I get it. it. I get I, it. I, I can't let my kid fall on the ground because you don't want to control your animal. No, and I like and, I said, I wouldn't. I I boot that dog into tomorrow if it happened to my well, kid. From you now know, on, and that's what we're gonna do. And then it's gonna be a physical altercation. And listen, I'm gonna give them exactly what I'm telling you guys. I'm I'm not going to shy. I'm going to tell them possibilities of what could come. And then if you guys end up getting in a fight over it now, depending on what happens, now we're looking at criminal charges. So if you kick that guy's dog and he attacks you as a result of it, he'll end up going to jail. Yeah, you know I what I mean? I'm not, I'm not going to play games with people. 
you know what I mean? I'm going to tell them exactly how it is. All right. Are so you they able either to write need to, up some simple report or something. Just so everything we do is called a call for service. So okay. there is going to be what's called a call for service attached to your address. All right. For tonight, this time and date, okay. you can get it from the police department. You can actually do it online. You can make a public information request and basically just give your address, the date that this happened and everything. So maybe just make a note like in your notebook type mm -hmm. of thing or your notepad, you know, the time and date and they can pull the call notes. So I'm going to type about a paragraph that okay. kind of says, hey, this is an ongoing That's situation, it's a civil issue through the landlord, you know, advice was given, okay. so on and so forth. But again, it'll be documentation that I was here, it'll be documentation for your landlord if he wants to pull a copy of it to give to an attorney or anything like that. Um, but that, unfortunately, is just where things stand. It's where, you know... And can you also advise them of the noise ordinance and that they cannot have their music blaring past 10 o'clock at night? It actually has no idea. It doesn't matter whether it's 10 or, or any time. There is no time limit. Basically, if you have music that is loud enough that is uh, disturbing other people. The problem is that's my bedroom window, wanna, window, and that's there. Uh, autistic son sleeps in the window. So there again, I mean, if they here's, here's the problem when it comes to that. You know, you can call us. We can come out. If they're like, hey, this is how loud our music is. If it's a normal, reasonable amount that's within a house and the walls are thin here, falls back on the landlord. I can't do anything about that. We can't tell people they just can't play music in their house if it's out of normal oh, no, it's like limits outside and normally it's about three octaves louder than this like i was gonna say it i can tell you right now at that level there's nothing i could do about it i would i would lean on your landlord and or you know i don't know how long you guys have been here if you're if you're good tenants or whatever if, you know maybe he'll have to weigh the options of whether you know he wants you guys or them you know it sounds like he's gonna have to lose somebody one way or another yeah, it so. sounds like he's probably gonna lose us because I'm not doing this, and no, they I seem all fine and dandy with okay. the way that they live their life, and okay. I don't live my life like this. I understand. All right. And I'm sorry I don't have a lot, you know, simpler uh, information for your solution, but, you I know. know. I just, we just please want you to make a record, because yeah. all of a sudden, it's not a matter of if. It's, it's a matter of when. when. I get it. It's going to happen. It. No, it's it. happening. So, so when one of them comes, because if he didn't come, he would have came here today. Right. It almost happened. Here, happen. would have, uh, right. would have been okay. They were where you were. A completely different. No, I'm trying to be honest. No, I understand. I, uh, I totally understand. And I don't. And I, yeah. And I obviously don't want that. Yep. You know, it's been over a hundred times. People, you know, they sleep all day, party I get it. all night. I get it. 12 hours a day. All right. I'll have a talk, I'll have a talk with them and, you know, hopefully it gets resolved. All right. All right, folks, try and have a better evening. Hi. Hello. All right, I don't know how much of the conversation you could over here. No, I was looking somewhere I dropped my mask. It popped off my belt somewhere. Oh, anyway. well, that part I can't kind of help you with. So. Have a seat, sir. Well, I can't sit down, but. Um, all right, so obviously there's the, the issue with the dog. I don't know how much you could over here, you know, what I was telling them. Um, we try not to eat shop, to be perfectly frank. Okay, well, nothing was a secret, all right? I, I told them everything that I explained to them I was going to explain to you guys. Okay, so here's here's the quick rundown, all right? Okay, uh, everyone has their, you know, the way they perceive stuff. But, um, so, the the thing that's like a little bit of a, a weird situation is, for me, for my involvement, I'm just here to give advice, okay? You guys are, you're in a little gated complex. This is all private property. So, as far as the Pinellas County leash laws go, and all that, none of that applies in here, okay? You're in a fenced-in area. The dog can't go anywhere else, you know, so there is no ordinance or law that well, says you have to have your dog on a leash. We're also told by the landlord that so long as we're out here with our dogs, then we're fine. And our dog, dog and his well, dog, they like to play out here. We were all, my na our, our neighbor and us, we were all sitting here, the dog's playing, and then... This has not been the first ordeal. That's and what I she said. It won't be the last. That's what um, she said. Obviously, I, what but their also biggest concerns. Their, their little tiny little dark, their dog got outside and they didn't know she was outside. And I just politely tapped on right. the door and said, "Hey, did you know your your dog was outside?" Well, so I think what the bigger issue is that I took from that is the fact that because your dog is larger, She's when it fine. comes. I'll let her out for you. Okay. Well, I guess they have a uh, a small child, an autistic they boy do. or whatever. You know, they don't and that. Very out front, but she's not an aggressive. Not saying not, and that's the, that's the whole thing. Is it not even aggressive? I'll, 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 okay. I'll gladly let her out. She's pretty okay. well mannered, though. That's like, that's what. Children, but right, 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 right. It's not the child so much as that she. It's, we that got her service. We got her service. She's a service, service, dog. service dog. Right. No, I understand that. And, and, and like. Started in uproar. And like like I explained to them, you know that that's fine. 
you, you're allowed to have a service dog and everything, but you know, if you if you look at the service stuff, like the dogs are actually supposed to be on voice command at all time if they're not on a leash. Well, but now she, again, she we're she was except for when they come through the gate, we don't know they're coming through the gate. Right. So like she was playing with Max Gregory's dog. They were out here playing when well, okay. they came in the gate, and it was immediate. I mean, and the last time it happened, I was here alone, and it was both of them on me, and they're. Very hostile, like very like yeah, angry people. Well, they're saying the dog has knocked their kid over. They that's said it ran in, untrue. ran into their house one they time did, after like, the. When we first got her, they had we let her out back, and they had their door open, and she immediately ran inside. Okay. Because she, it was her first time here. It was her first like day I get it. she was here. I get it. We let her come in. Right. We let her come out back, and then I came <laughs> out. But then I walked back in because I wasn't really. I didn't actually know their door was open. Had I known. I wouldn't have done that. Right. But their door was open and she did go inside. But I get it. End. So, you know, and, and I mean, and, and here's the thing there, there might be a a sort of like a story. Can I talk for just a minute? I'm sorry. And Please. Oh, well, oh, no, no, no. I'm so sorry. I, I get that a lot of these things are probably somewhat explainable and probably overall not malicious or anything like no. that. But it's, it's creating obviously an issue between you and the neighbors, right? They're, um, they're, they're, version of it the way they are perceiving this again whether it's a hundred percent accurate or not is how they're perceiving it obviously your version of it is different than theirs and that's how you guys see it okay and you know the, the problem is they're 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 different right you guys aren't agreeing on this type of thing and we don't knock it right and so all i can say to you is if you allowing your dog to have roam of this area is going to continue to create problems like well, that then they're gonna can I can I, can I please just talk time. can I please talk oh, I'm sorry. okay if it's gonna continue to create problems then the landlord's gonna get involved and then at a, a certain point he's gonna make a decision of whether or not like if you guys can't continue to like coexist in this small area which is like what it's sounding like is almost gonna happen somebody's gonna have to go at some point or things are gonna escalate all right because the guy over there just told me basically the next time the dog comes on his property and is near his kid or whatever, he's going to do whatever is necessary to protect the well-being of his child and his not. Which, just so you guys know, as far as a legal standpoint goes, if that dog goes on his property, goes on his little porch area, and he articulates, hey, it was going towards my son, I thought it, and he stabs your dog with a kitchen knife, he's not going to get in trouble. Okay? And like I told them, I love dogs. I don't want to see anything bad happen to an animal whatsoever but I can already tell the level that they're getting at with this is they're fed up, all right? So whether you guys think it's justified or not, that's how they're taking it. So I'm just, I'm being honest with you and I'm relaying that to you so you know where things stand. So moving forward, I just feel like something has got to change, whatever it is, because if this continues, it's gonna get worse. I don't really know what else to say other than that. I mean, at some point, the landlord's gonna have to get involved. If, if you could start to build some sort of a rapport with them again, maybe if it was even through like a text message to where like, let's say there's a time that you and that other person with the dog want to have the dogs out, maybe text the lady, hey, we were going to let, I don't know what the dog's names are, you know, hey, we were going to let Brody and whoever, just I'm almost done, we're going to let Brody and so whatever be in the, in the parking lot, could you text me if you guys are coming out and we'll make sure we get them or whatever to where like, you know, you know, they're coming out. Cause like you said, you don't know if they're walking through the gate or not. And that's totally understandable. Right. But at the same token, they shouldn't have to wonder every time they walk through the gate, do I have to deal with this dog running up on me? And again, not that it's aggressive, but if it's knocking into him, he's saying it knocked the groceries out of their hands tonight, which could be a dog playing. I get that, but whatever. So it's something to consider, all right, to try and coexist. But so what is it that you wanted to say now? Well, I did actually offer, and maybe it's more of a, a job on their part than ours, but I did say, like, if, if you guys are pulling in, if you'll text me and let me know, we'll make sure the dogs are up. Okay. And she said, that's not my responsibility, and this is not my problem. And their expectation is that our dog remain on our porch, and his dog remain on his porch, which he doesn't even actually have. Right. They've also set the expectations that our dogs are not to go into the back part of the yard because they don't want their child stepping in fecal matter. They dogs are not to run out here because right. they don't want the child falling in. And unfortunately, that's not their say. Okay, they don't have the authority to say that that's it's what has to be done. Like now, if the landlord comes along and says, hey guys, 
this is what the lease agreement is. The dog can't be running around in the parking lot anymore, yada, yada. Well, his part to us was that so long as we were out here with the dogs, it was fine, but we could not leave them out unattended. And I agree with that, but there again, it sounds like you guys were out here, but the dog was still able to get over there and start rummaging around them. And it, right. Because we wouldn't be in this well, issue, I wouldn't walked, be here. Yeah, because they walked in and the dogs went over. Right. So, I get it. You know, yeah, I get both parts. That, that's what it is. So like I said, and, and I told him this, and a lot of this is going to fall on the landlord. You know, if it gets to be too much of an aggravation for him, he's probably either going to make stricter rules and say, hey, this is how it has to be, and if we can't do this, then I'm not going to renew your lease or whatever it yes. may be, okay? So just try your best. I mean, it sounds like you're, you've been trying to do some things. I mean, obviously right now they're at their, or they appear to be at their wit's end. So, you know, you making the offer, hey, text me and I'll put him away. And she's like, well, that's not my responsibility. Right. Okay, sure, it's not. But there again, that's something where I would say, if you guys can work together, maybe it could but be resolved. Honestly, it doesn't sound like she wants to, at least at this point. Too. That's um, not, you know, that's the all right. The first time I ever said anything, I mean, they come over here, I'll be working on something about this. Yeah, that's that. verbally assaulting me. Like, he called her, he called her a bitch, trailer trash, he called her a right. And that's not cool either, but you know. It's not, but that's how you learn the kind of people you're, with all due respect, the type of person that you're dealing with. And that's how, you know, like, I literally have said a hundred times since this happened, like, you don't take medicine that you're allergic to. We know, and yes, sometimes, like, we're human and we let the, we let the anger and, like, whatnot get the best of us, but, like, we know not to engage in, like, that type of misery because we, we, we tr the sad part is we truly know what brought on the bitterness and the anger and it was nothing to do with the dog unfortunately. Okay. The dog is fine, she's not large nor she aggressive. The dog was not paid at the top for and that's truly what like brought, like that, that brought a whole new level of problem. But that's between you guys and the landlord, I mean, yeah, it should no, have nothing to do with them. I'm not trying to involve you, I'm just trying to well, fill so you in landlord, so that. The landlord that you, and the landlord said that, so that's really, Right, but again, I don't know why that's any of their business. It's right. not like well, they made them either. pay for your we pet deposit or something. Him. I mean, you know. Like he's tried to tell us things about uh, our neighbors, and we've said, "Listen, what he does is not our business. What right. we do is not theirs." We have actually tried to like um, we keep that little door up, and, like block her in for most of the day. I okay. take her out front, even though. I'm nervous about the traffic because she does tend to. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't want her getting out front out there. I mean, uh, well, absolutely I had to not. I put her out there and she okay. won't go on a leash. Like, she has to be unleashed to actually go, though. Um, okay. And they've also, like, made it clear that that side of the shed is there, so she's not to go there. They actually moved our son's bicycles from there. Right. Um, very aggressively. And so we've dealt with this aggression pretty calmly, I would say. And I don't mean to, like, well, we're not going to make a fuss. We're just simply not going to. Um, right. Because we know that we're not actually bothering anybody. It's just people that are already bothered and have something. And about. that might be the case. You know, like I said, obviously, I don't think it's going to go away. So something from this point needs to change and exactly what that is i don't know night. but we've let her out to play like actually just like play and be free since the last fight happened and and then another fight happened and then they were very aggressive and then when there was nothing else for them to do they said we're gonna call the police but i, I mean we both said like we're not really doing anything wrong right. we're just here on our back porch how do they keep going the porch is on everything Right. All right. Well, I mean, we'll that's just where we are. I wanted until to until the know. landlord does get involved and like makes it clear to everybody across the board uh -huh. how this goes, then we'll we'll keep her like do you what know, you can, you and know. we will. And I would love if they could give me like the heads up if they're coming in or something. But if not, we don't have to. I, sir. I, Hey, sir, I, I understand you're listening in, and that was one of my suggestions. I understand you don't have to do that, but I'm trying to come up with some sort of a solution in the meantime that if the dogs are going to be out, I mean, what would it take for a simple text message of, of one person to the other to say, hey. We despise them. We would never contact them for any reason. Okay, well, then you know what? Then that's fine. If you want to keep, if you wanna keep making it difficult and not be willing to work on a solution, the then solution that's... would be for them to keep possession of their animal. That they don't have to, all right? And that's one of the first things... Hold on. No. That's one of the first things I told you when I walked up here. 
You live in an area where they do not have to do that. The only person that says they have to do that is the landlord. And if he's willing to enforce it, then fine. So in the meantime, I'm trying to come up with a solution that two adults could maybe communicate a little bit to where if it's as simple as their dog and this other dog running around playing when nobody's out here, and if you knew you were coming home or they could mention to you, hey, we'll put them up. To me, that sounds like a pretty reasonable thing for the time being. But if you, you obviously don't have to do that, okay? And if you don't want to, then that's fine. But now you're, you know, you're not helping facilitate any kind of solution. It seems like it's more of an inconvenience to me to ask someone to do something that they should just know what to do logically. We have okay. a two-year-old autistic son officer. Okay. He's special needs. Okay. He sleeps in the bedroom in that window that's located up on the porch where okay. they party on every single night. Okay. Every then, sir, night. you know, I mean, like I told I you when I was up there before, maybe this isn't the best place for you guys to oh, live. I, oh, I, I know that. You I, know? I just, all I, I remember mean, is that you said that if we feel threatened and their large animal does proceed to charge us, that we are able to defend ourselves. Yeah. So I do stand on that. Mr. Okay. Paul. And that's fine. You, you do what you need to do if, if that's the case. So... Uh, I'm not going to go round and round with this anymore. Obviously you can see, you know, it, no you know, um, I would, I, for the protection of your own animal right. and whatnot, I would be extra careful. Uh, what because are the laws on the, like, um, how does, do you have to have it like captured on video, like, um, animal abuse? Like, because our threat was it that she was seen off this porch off the leash, he would kick her. So if he kicks her, what do I do? Oh yeah. If the dog was just walking around out here and he kicks and he the kicks dog, her, what, that would be a, do? that would be a criminal charge. You call the police. Do, how do I prove it? You don't have to. Okay. Basically, you call us. We would take the report. So you if know, does, if she's out running around and they come in and he kicks her, I can call and say, he, he kicked the dog and she was just out running and, around. And again, it's the, what's going to boil down to is it's going to be he said, she said, because he's going to say, well, it ran at we me and I felt I mean, threatened. No, we don't want that. Right. And that's why I'm trying to talk we to everybody here and be reasonable. Problems, you know, the, the, the less problems possible. We don't want, we don't want this, sir. Right. Like, okay. I, of... yeah, I wouldn't think anybody would want it, but you know, here again, I offered a pretty simple solution and, and people don't want to deal with it. So that's at one okay. hand, people tell me they don't want to deal with this, not you. But, you know, on the other hand, a simple uh, solution I, doesn't want to be, you know, if, work with. Well, if we could get the land Is that a stupid here? question to ask? Is that not defamation of character for what? the way he's speaking about us? No, it's his, opi <laughs> it's his opinion, <laughs> you know. I mean, so, yeah, I, you, I, and personally, if I were you, I'd call the landlord right now and well, let him know, you know. I could get him down here because he clearly stated, like, as long as we're out here, the dogs are fine. It's that we can't let the dogs out to freely roam. Right. Amongst themselves. But, uh, you need to call them and have a conversation with them. You know what I mean? Uh, again, it's not really That's my... not something you could stick around for, huh? I mean, I, no offense. I've kind of already been here longer than we would normally invest in something like this because this is a, this is a civil matter between you, them, and the landlord. So here's what I would say is talk to the landlord. Let them know, look, the police got called for this. Here's where we're at. This is what was discussed. If, and if he feels like he needs to talk to us for some reason, he can absolutely call and find out that I was here and I'll talk to him Any over the phone or something. Like so what I was explaining to them, calls like this we do, it's called a call for service. So there's going to be a, a call for service attached to this address. I'm going to type some notes that gives a very quick rundown of what we all discussed, but it shows that the police were called in here at this time and this date yes, for this, you know, issue. Right. All right. Um, I hate to like, I hate to like, bed a dead drum, but... Could you put your notes that we did all for like for them to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. So just so when they get the report, because we're not, we don't want to be difficult. We don't want to be unpleasing. We just, we just want to be mostly. I understand, um, and you know? and you know their their thing is so do they, and that the dog is the thing totally that's interrupting like, totally. that being able to happen. So you know now we're 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 back to where we started when I first got uh, here of got the you. perception of this dog and its behavior and gotcha. how it is or is not affecting their life. Thank you, Mr. Maria. No problem. Um, Try and it. figure well, something out. Well, All right. Thanks, sir. All right. Take care. All right, everyone, that's where I'm going to wrap this one up. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know it was a little on the long side, but thanks for bearing with me if you made it here to the end. As I mentioned before, if you guys are new here, if you enjoyed this, definitely hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up. It really helps the channel out and I greatly appreciate it. So until the next video, I want you guys to take really good care of yourselves and stay safe out there.